Season. He has four already. There's Joe Cole, Paul Scholes with us. Paul, there's a little bit of gloom around this place. I know the fans are not here. Two defeats in a row, big injuries, big departures. How big a shot in the arm is that performance? Yeah, it's a big boost to them, as you said. They had struggled the last the last couple of games, I suppose. Last few games, not a, not on a great run, but tonight, no, against a, a really good Chelsea team as well. As I said, it's what it's what they do. They, they went back to what they were used to doing, what they know how to do, which was to defend deep, hit teams on the counter attack, and, and wait and just stay in games as long as they can. They did that today, and they relied on two brilliant moments to win them the game. Well, let's talk about the, the winner from Pedro Neto. They came right deep into injury time, and, and Joe, as you look at this, what could Chelsea have done? better here. Well, listen, straight away you deal with it there. Uh, it was kind of a bit of a basketball game, but it was like you attack, we attack. And once he gets away, Zuma knows what he's going to do. Neto knows what to do. The only thing that Zuma could possibly do is bring him down early on in the move and just accept the free kick on the edge of the box because Zuma backs his speed, but Neto just drags him in here with his left foot, takes him in, leaves the space, and it's a lovely finish going across. And he was brilliant right from the... He was the difference for me yeah. Neto. I know Podence got man in the match and, and you know, you, you can argue that, but Neto was sensational. He's got such speed such athleticism and such skill and what, what a great finish was a winner from the home side brewing in those last 10 minutes or so i think it was yeah it was interesting the last 15 20 minutes as, as i said before i was waiting for pedant and neto to really come alive it's something they don't tend to do they do some really good bits in games without actually going on to win a game for for the team but we, we saw a little bit of pedant down there he got really aggressive started playing some really nice football and they produce two brilliant moments, and they've got to do that, especially with Jimenez not in the team and Jimenez scoring all the goals. These two players, especially, have got to contribute more. Well, let's look at Podence's goal because that ended up being the equaliser that set up Wolves' platform to eventually get the winner. But the big talking point for Frank Lampard, whether it was a corner or not, what was your verdict, gents? Well, it's, it's one of them, isn't it? I think. You, you look at the pitches and it probably wasn't a corner, but if you look at it from, from here now, upon it, the, the, how he shifts his body, delays it. He's one of them players where when he gets into tight areas, he, he, almost, he almost looks like he's got more time than, than he should have. Look, look, the left foot there, the fake, then again the second fake, and just it was only needed a two-yard gap and he just struck it through. Little deflection, you can't really argue with a keeper because of the deflection, but it was a great bit of skill. And he's been showing flashes of this in the last couple of games and beyond, hasn't he? That he can do this kind of thing to teams. He has, yeah. We know he's a really talented lad. I thought that was a really good goal. Sometimes, you know, you might have a little bit of pop at the goalkeeper. And the keeper probably expects him to go to the far side. But he uses the defender in front of him to block, block the vision of the keeper and just whips it. I know he gets a, a slight deflection, but I thought it was a brilliant goal. Did you see belief I mean, beginning to course through walls as that second half developed? Yeah, and I think, I think Chelsea, when they analyse the second half, I think they'll, they'll kick themselves, particularly for Neto's goal, because they just lost their shape a little bit in attack. And what you needed was, maybe it was Kovacic or Kante, to just deal with that ball as they cleared it and then they could have sustained the attack. They didn't do that. And too many times they were letting Neto, whether it's Neto, Traore, Pedence in the, in the last 20, 30 minutes, just to drive at their back four and the game become end-to-end -end and Wolves look like they had the fitter, stronger, more athletic team. I mean, you pit. said to me when we were watching on that Chelsea were beginning to look a little bit fatigued I, as that second half progressed. I, I thought so. I thought so. And I think, you know, you have to take into consideration Chelsea have, have had a fantastic Champions League campaign as well. And it comes, you know, you don't want to be not informed coming into the Christmas period because there's so many points up for grabs. But I think Frank might have to look at this like maybe... In, maybe you know, take a view on a few players who looked a little bit leggy. You know, we've got the squad. And again, I think he's a, I think Everton was a bump in the road. This is a little bit of a bigger bump in the road. I still don't think it's any of them where you, 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 you certainly don't change too much. Maybe just tweak a few players here and there. I've got to be confident in what they've done because it was 17 games unbeaten before these last two mm. games. So, But in this game, they just looked a bit jaded. Uh, Olivier Giroud, Paul, at the end there, he was taken off, looked dejected. A contrast to this moment, though, goal line technology proving how valuable it is. How good a finish was this? Uh, this is brilliant. Great, great movement from Chilwell. Werner plays him in and... This is really good. Getting across your man like that is what centre forwards do. Our boss has said it to us all the time. Get across that front post, you'll score goals. And Bolly is a little bit asleep, of course he is, but he, there's no way you can see that man coming across him. And look, he gets a little bit of luck, but it's, it's definitely over the line. Chelsea on a, as a whole tonight, I don't think they create enough to, to win the game, to be honest with you. I think Pulisic was a, a big plus in the first half, but he, he tired, and you can understand yeah. that. He's not played a lot of football. So I think...
probably on balance of play. I think Wolves probably deserved it with that, that, that last 20 minutes. So often this season, we've talked negatively about VAR, but tonight we're talking in a positive way because it did its job, gentlemen. Rhys James on Neto, VAR doing what it's yeah, supposed to do. It, it got it right, and we, we had a great view of the bench, the Wolves bench, and they must have seen this highlight. Clearly, he, do, he goes down too easy. Listen, we we'll wax lyrical about him. He's a great player, but... He knows that he, he's put bodies around him. The ball's going to be, Zuma's going to clear it. He goes down. VAR got it right, you know, and, and, and there was a bit of um and R in from the Wolves bench over there, but it was a great decision. And that's what it's there for, and, and that's what we want it for. We need more moments like that this season, don't we? But all too often we've been pointing the <laughs> finger at VAR yeah. and saying what's going on. Yeah, it's nice to get through it. And look, we've got the right decision. I, I don't think he actually died, but I just think he, he was off balance, but he definitely wasn't touched, and the right, the right decision was made in the end. Uh, let's go to Matt Upson, who's been part of our commentary team here at Molyneux tonight. Uh, let's talk, first of all, about Wolves. What a terrific win for them, Matt. What did they do well tonight, particularly in that second half? Well, I think we've touched on, you know, Wolves got back to what they know. And, and it's about the wide players for me. I mean, the moment um, Neto was, was, was faced up with Zuma, you always fancied him just to drop that shoulder. And he's got that yard of pace where he can just put the burners on. It was all about the finish in the end. But... Creating those situations is key for Wolves and being able to move Chelsea around and almost wear them down to the point where they, they have that little lapse in concentration and it allows a Traore or a Neto just to be in that situation is what they thrive on and, and the finish was there for them tonight. Uh, and in terms of the, the back four or back three, went back to a back three tonight. Do you think you'll stick with that for the time being? I think so. I, I really do. I think it works. I mean, I, th I think Bowley went to sleep on the goal a little bit. But other than that, they kept Chelsea to limited opportunities. I mean, Zuma had a good header, which they, that from a back three perspective, they have to do better with. But it was a great header and a great leap from Zuma. But on the whole, I think just looking at Wolves right from the off, they just look comfortable with that three. The wide players, the wing backs wide. Cody hit a few of those diagonals and clips the ball into space. And I just think they need to get a little bit more confidence and a little bit more intensity all across the team and, and, and they'll do what they do, Wolves, and they do it well. What did you make of Chelsea overall? I mean, Joe made the point that towards the end of that second half they were looking slightly fatigued. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You know, I listened to Joe's point. I felt they were a little bit fatigued all over the pitch and, you know, at the back as well with, with Silva and Zuma playing a lot of games. So, you know, he's got a big squad to rotate. It's just about rotating it at the right time with the right players. And, you know, that's the, that's the big conundrum. Sometimes as a manager, it's harder when you've got a lot more players and got the, the avail availability to rotate players, then you've got to make a lot of choices and you have to get those choices right. Matt, thank you. Let's get some Chelsea reaction now then. N'Golo Kante with Adam Hunt. Next time at home next for Chelsea, do you have any concerns given what's happened the last couple of days, couple of games heading into this busy festive period? No, 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 no concerns. Like I said right at the start, and I've been saying it all season, I, I think it's going to be the tightest league. We've, I think this, many teams are going to drop many points. The, the league champions this year will not have anywhere near record points because everyone's strengthened. We've seen a Wolves team tonight that are languishing in mid-table. Some of the quality that they showed at times, not all the time, but some of the quality was, was top draw. So I expect... I expect Chelsea to drop points. But again, if you're going to be a top side, you, you know what you need to do. The coaches does not need to do. I think they've, they, right from the start of the season, they look well drilled. They've looked organised. They've looked a threat. Having Pulisic back is a big, a, a, a big plus now. So I just think big, nothing better than a big derby to play now on Saturday. It's a massive game at Stamford Bridge that Chelsea have to win. And in terms of that front line pull for Chelsea, obviously Giroud gets the goal for them tonight. He started this evening. Is, is Frank Lampard any nearer to knowing what his best front line is? He, he, he did have a couple of injuries as well. You have to say that Hudson Adoy and um, Ziek as well, which are very creative, important players for him. I just think there's possibly a little bit of lack of creativity in the, in the middle of the pitch. Kante does what he does, and he does that brilliantly well. He's got two young players next to him, Mason Mount and Havertz, who I think will be sensational players. I just think that's why they probably won't win the league this year. I just think it's a bit, bit early for them. Um, I think they'll be up there, close to Chelsea and Liverpool, uh, to Manchester City and Liverpool. I just don't think they're quite ready. But in a year's time, I'd expect them with a bit of experience, a bit more know-how, a bit more quality. I think they'll be up there challenging. Timo Werner, what do you make of him at the moment? He started the season so strongly. Times looked a bit of a passenger in that game. I think I, I think he's he's had a good start to his Chelsea career. Um, I think you, you can compare him with other big foreign imports. Sometimes come to this league, certainly in these situations, you have to 
understand that it might take them time to settle. I think him and Hatverts has done well. Werner's probably settled in a little bit quicker. They are two top players. I know because you see the glimpses. I think I think again Werner's been. I think when he when he comes in off that left, he's very very dangerous. I just think he just needs to brush up a little bit on his finishing. But he's a young striker and he will do that. So I've got no doubts he'll be a top top player for Chelsea. But like like. Scalzi said there's, there's options now and he needs to move it around. Zayek and hudson Adoy to come back in, fresh, freshen it up at some point, take Werner out, bring him back in. You have to, this is this it's a marathon to, to win a title. Certainly, even, and usually, but certainly in, in, in this year as well, it's going to be difficult. And you've got to use your whole squad. So Werner maybe come out, bring the other lads in and bring him back in. But no, I have no doubt Werner and Havertz will be massive players for Chelsea. But it is. And Joey talked about players thinking they're playing well and talking about that, that unbeaten run they've been on. Do you think he was suggesting some complacency has crept in? I think he was. And, and, and Frank, of course, he's a, he, he's a champion. He knows what it takes to, to do it. And I think what he's, what he's saying there is something he said after the Everton game. You know, young squad, young players. You know, you, you, as young players, you do get complacent. You do want to pat yourself on the back after, and, and football comes easy. And as you mature as a footballer and get older, you realise that the levels you have to be consistent. You have to not just week in, week out, day in, day out. So I think... It, that was why he sort of not ruled his team out of the, the title. He just said, listen, we, you can't compare us at the moment to Liverpool and Man City because they're full of champions, uh, players who've done it years and years. And, you know, this is still a young Chelsea team and a work in progress. That's done fantastically well. And, and like, I, I think Monday night is the perfect game, a big London derby. You know, and, and the fact it's on Monday that gives the lads a, a little bit more rest and just to, just to let this resonate, sit and, you know, spin stew on the performance a little bit and then Monday night they'll be right at it, I'm sure. Uh, you know one or two things about winning the Premier League. You've played under a manager who knows an awful lot about how you go about winning this. What does Frank Lampard need to learn over the course of the next few games? I mean, these are not what you want to happen, but they're part of a steep learning curve, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Of course they are. But I think Frank's doing a, a, a really good job, mm. a brilliant job, in fact, with, with, with the team. I think they've got an identity. They play a 4-3-3. Everybody seems to know the way they play, what, what's expected of them. Bringing Thiago Silva in was a, you know, a really astute signing. Whether he can play every game, I don't know, at 36 years of age, might be difficult. But I, I think the problem he's got is creativity. Looking at the, looking at the last two games, yeah. at Everton as well, on Saturday, they, they hardly created a chance. I think in the middle of the pitch, it didn't, they need... I think they've got the players. Like I said, just, as Joe said, they're just young players and it's going to take them a bit of time. I think Mason Mount, every time I see him, I'm really impressed with him. I think he could become like a Frank Lampard. I think he's got the technique, the ability to really win games for Chelsea. And he's got, no, he's, Mason's got his manager there to, to fall back on. No better to learn from. He should be winning games for Chelsea. And I think in years to come, he will score a lot of goals just like Frank. But that's one of the big challenges for any manager as an embarrassment of riches in terms of the squad. You've got lots of great pieces, but fitting them together and making them work is the big challenge, isn't it? Exactly. And, and, and you know, before these last two games, you know, Frank, no one could knock on Frank's door. 17 games unbeaten. So if you're out the side, you know, and you're, I don't know, you're, for instance, you're Emerson, Alonso, Christensen, it's one of these guys, you can't knock on his door, but <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a queue now, you know, because that's how it works in your squad rotation. It's, it's a tough job trying to keep everyone happy and you can't do it. The job Frank's got is to try and win games. And, it, and, and agree with Scalzi in the sense that, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with his team. There's nothing wrong with the personnel. It's just a question of, of, of like, they need a, a, like a fine wine. They'll get better and they'll get better and you just got to stay patient with them. Um, there is an identity. He's improved in all areas from last season in terms of the set pieces. They're now on top of the league, having been at the bottom. Dealt with the goalkeeper, the centre half, the left back. It's all come in, and it just, like I said, just be, just be calm and see how it goes. After the Christmas period, I think Chelsea will still be there or thereabouts. But whether it's enough to compete with a Liverpool this season, maybe not. But this is the right, the right time for Chelsea, and the right project. How much will he draw on what he learnt under Mourinho, where he won those three Premier League titles at Chelsea? I, th I think he's come out and he, he's been quite open. He says he, he, he's drawn from all of his managers. Mm. He said it about Carlo. All, you know, you'd be silly not to not to play for these great managers and, 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 and you know, taking something what they do. But Frank's very much his own mind. And I can see Frank's identity on the team. He'd be, fr he'd be so frustrated. He said about the counter-attacks. The goal came from a counter-attack. So straight away, he, he knows what the problem was there. It was a little bit of astuteness, like a little bit of bit cleverness. You could have stopped that Neto go at, at source as they cleared the header. Or Zuma, quick as he is, could have just brought Neto down, took a book in, 
and it might have been 1-1. So that's a little bit of maturity that's got to come with it. But the great thing about this season, from a Chelsea point of view, is that title race at the moment is so open. No one is pulling away like we saw Liverpool do last season. So even when you've got a run of two defeats in a row, you're still right in it. Yeah, you're going to be right. So as Joe said earlier, it's going to be the tightest league I think we've had for such a long time. I still think Liverpool are the best team. I still think they'll win the league. Um, it, nowhere near as gap. The gap will be as, as big as it as it was last season. I expect Manchester City to get close. Then there's the rest of them, really, who are much of a muchness, really. I still expect Man United to improve massively. Chelsea, really good team, as we've seen, as we know. They'll be, they'll, they'll be there or thereabouts. But, look, it's going to be tight, it's going to be tough, but I, I just don't expect Chelsea to be there this year. Well, let's have a look at the Premier League table. And by the way, underway already at the Etihad is Manchester City at home to West Brom. We don't have the table available, but that game is underway. No goals so far at the Etihad. But let's get on to Wolves. Brilliant night for them. They've beaten Chelsea here by two goals to one. Let's hear from Nuno Espirito Santo with Adam Hunt. This Wolves side do. Well, the first two games after they lost him, they lost them confidence wise. What will tonight do? It should give them a big boost. We said before the game, they've got players with, with quality in the team, but they needed to really step up tonight. And if they're going to win games in the future, they're going to have to do exactly the same. I think Nuno was right, second half, they really livened up Wolves after a pretty quiet first half. But that's what Wolves do. It's when they're at the best, they stay in the game for as long as they possibly can. At times, they're not the best to watch. <laughs> But the last 15, 20 minutes... They, they were really good to watch. They come alive last yeah. 15, 20 minutes. And I think Peden started all that off, really, with a little bit of aggression down here. Then he started playing really well. Some nice little one-touch football, scored a really good goal. And Wolves were well worthy of the, of the victory, I thought, towards the end. Joe, let's have a look at what Wolves have got coming up. Uh, Burnley away next, big game then against Tottenham, then comes to United, Brighton, Crystal Palace and Everton. Two seventh-place finishes in the last two seasons on their return to the Premier League. What's possible this season? Um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It, it, like Espirito said there, you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strange season. Um, if they finish seventh again this year, with the injuries they've had, plus losing Jota, plus developing players like Otosawi, you know, the continued development of Neto, you know, I think the owners will be happy. The fans would like to see a little bit more. I, f I feel like, yes, they go back to the back. I think they're quite negative, Wolves, and I think they've got better players than they realise. I think Neto... Pedence, Traore, all in the same team, could do some real damage. You know, so uh, you know, I understand he's a pragmatic manager and it, he does what works for him. They, they, they play on the break. But you almost like... Neto today has excited me yeah. watching him. I've, I've seen him live before, but I've seen him develop and I think he's a great player. You know, he's, and I think he's a great developer of, of players. Espirito and the Wolves, but I think they can even be, they can be better. There was times today in the first half, particularly, they sort of just sat off Chelsea and wanted to say, listen, it worked in the end and, and fair play to him. But... I think there's another level to go up. I'm just not sure with that system they can get a bad decision. I think Kovacic should have stopped it at source. His positioning was bad. But, you know, they're the details. And they're minor details for Chelsea. And Neto, would like, like I said, he just impressed me so much. He, he's so... He, he, when he gets the ball, he just goes out. He, he run past Reese James here. And yeah. I've not seen anyone do that. <laughs> and with George Mendes, you would expect Wolves probably to... Well, well, it's been a tough night again for Chelsea. They lost to Everton the weekend. They've lost to Wolves tonight. What a brilliant finish from the home side. It was back of the netto for Wolves. Good night. One in injury time here tonight. How happy are you with that result? Uh, we are very happy. The work that, that we have done to pass these two, these two losses that we have in the last two games. We come here today with the... Uh, with the joy and the, 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 we want to win so much that we work hard and today we take the deserved victory. How much mental strength did it take to come back from going a goal down against a side like Chelsea? Uh, it's very difficult. We knew, we knew that they are a good team, but uh, what we speak in the locker room, is even if uh, the game is going not so well for, the, for us, we get together and we go as a team is what we have done and we take the three points. We are very happy. Your teammate Daniel Podence got man of the match. He got that brilliant equaliser. He brought so much energy when you were coming back into the game. Did that spur the rest of the team on? Yeah, of course. Uh, we are always on on the game, you know. We know that we can win the game in the first minute, in the last minute. So we are on all the game and we have done very well. We worked hard. The team did very well, all the team, and we are very happy, like I said.
talk us through your winning goal. It was a brilliantly taken finish. Yeah, it was a happy moment for me uh, that Vitor, like Vitor, came in. He did a great job. We, uh, is, like, is what I said, we are a team who starting, who came off the bench, is uh, set to work, and we are very happy. Thank you, well played. Thank you, thank you very much. Impressive finish from him. Impressive finish from Wolves as well. He scored three goals in the whole of last. Nuno, so, considering you went a goal down, you must have been so happy with the response from your team. Yeah, we react good. We react well. Um, all the game, all the game. I think we we are always in the game, um, well organized, and uh, I think in the second half we play really good, really good football. There was noticeably a lot more energy Sorry? from your team. There was noticeably a lot more energy from your team in the second half. Was that the message from you at half time to lift the tempo? Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, in the first half was the game was very, very tight. Uh, Chelsea had the ball, but we we were organised. Um, they create some problems in set pieces. In the second half, uh, yes, yes, it was not about the message. It's about what you want, what what you feel in the game. Um, but we didn't start the game well in the second half. Well, we can see one goal. Strange situation on on the on the wide area that we must we must uh, analyse and see. But after that, yes, like you said, the boys believed. Uh, that the game was there to, to be competitive on it, and we did well. Things can change so quickly in football, particularly at this time of year. After two defeats, how much confidence will your players take from winning in the last minute? It's not about, it's not about that. We were really disappointed uh, three days ago. Uh, football is until the last minute, can happen, can happen to any team. Uh, we had a big disappointment um, against Villa, and we act well. That is all about. Now we're going to think about the next one. Because, um, like you say, it's a strange, strange season, very strange season. We miss our fans. Today, today we, we miss them. Um, the situations that happen, it's too much voices uh, around the referee, around the technical staff, all these things. Um, and it's too bad that the fans are not here to celebrate with us today. It was a debut for young Owen Otisawi. Were you pleased with how he played there in the second half? Yeah, he did well, he did well. Uh, he's a boy that has been working with us some time now. He has, he has talent, he's strong, but he's a, he's a project uh, that we have to work on and, and try to develop. Just finally, quickly, not too long before January, with the injuries you've got, do you expect to be busy in the transfer window? I don't know, now is not the moment. Now is the moment. It's something that we are aware of. There are players, there are players very important for us that are out. Uh, but now we have to look at the squad. Today we had another problem with, with Leander. Let's see how it is. Boli. Let's see how it is. But um, it's not, not only the squads, the under, under 23 are our, our backup. So let's try to, to build something. Thank you, Nuno. Well thank done. You, sir, and Paul, the big question was without Raul Jimenez, what would the back to back Premier League defeats for the first time in 2020 for Chelsea? Let's hear from Frank Lampard then with Adam Hunt. Frank, having got the opening goal in the game, how disappointing you've come away with nothing? Yeah, very. At 1 0, we should see the game out. Was there enough from your side after you scored that goal to really push on for a, for a second? No, no. And not, not just push on for a second, but if you're not playing that well, which we weren't tonight, hang on to 1 0. Play, control the game, don't allow counter attacks, and we did. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to see their first goal again. Was it a corner? I haven't seen it. Um, Chelsea, of course, you, two defeats in a row under pressure. What's changed in the last couple of games? Because you were on such a brilliant run, weren't you, in, in the Cup and the league before that? The performance. Performance is what gives you results. And we were playing very well on a long unbeaten run. And then maybe the lads think we're playing well. And the minute you think you're playing well, things like this can happen. On the positive side, Olivier Giroud, another goal for him. Six goals in five appearances now. Are you delighted with how he's taken his opportunity in the team? Yeah, yeah, for Oli, yeah, when he gets another goal, good contact and a good goal for him, but doesn't feel like much at the moment. And just finally, you've got a chance to rest and recover before the West Ham game on Monday. Will that be important this week? Yeah, yeah, but maybe for the players also to, to think about the game while they're resting. Think about tonight, think about Everton. As I say, this is the Premier League, and if you don't perform, you lose games. You've got a game on Monday. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Understanding they're pretty terse and frustrated, Frank Lampard there.